guys, at 101 live viewers. Joshua na po tayo. Joshua chapter 1. And we will read from verses 1 to 9. Read with me the word of God, please. Huwag po kayong tumingin kung saan-saan. You look at your Bible and you read the Bible by yourself. Okay? Joshua chapter 1 verses 1 to 9. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua the son of Nun, Moses minister, saying, Moses my servant is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper, whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success have not i commanded thee be strong and of a good courage be not afraid neither be thou dismayed for the lord thy god is with thee whithersoever thou goest nice ko pong kunin yung sinabi ng ating panginoon sa verse 7 at inulit po ito sa verse 8 upang siyang ating maging subject sa umagang ito. Ang sinabi ng Diyos kay Joshua, that thou mayest prosper. That thou mayest prosper. Dito po sa Joshua chapter 1, Joshua stepped into the biggest opportunity of his life. Most likely, meron po siyang mixed emotions. Sapagkat nararamdaman niya, he had to step up and lead the people. Joshua had a big shoes to fill. Dahil si Moses po na kanyang leader ay pumanaw na at yung pag-leader pag sa bayan ng Israel ay naipasa ni Moses kay Joshua. Si Joshua po, mga minamahal, he did not have normal characteristics that we normally think about when we think of a leader. Wala ho sa kanya yung katangian na kadalasan ay iniisip natin na meron ng isang leader. Unang-una, wala ho siyang past leadership experience. Up to this point, ang sabi po, siya po ay naglilingkod lamang kay Moses as a minister or assistant. Pero hindi po doon bumase ang Diyos sa mga kakulangan at kahinaan meron kay Joshua sa pagpili kay Joshua para pumalit kay Moses. Rather, God focus on His potential. Just like He does with us. Hindi po tinitingnan ng Diyos yung ating mga kahinaan at kakulangan. Ang tinitingnan po ng Diyos sa atin, yung potential po natin na tayo po ay magagamit niya sa kanyang kaharian. Dito po mga minamahal, the difference 
na gagawa ng malaking pagbabago sa buhay ni Joshua ay kung paano siya magiging isang mabuting tagasunod. Alam nyo si Joshua, he followed the Lord with all his heart. And he was loyal to his leader, kay Moses. At nakita ng Diyos ito kay Joshua na siya naging isang mabuting katiwala kahit na sa katayuan na siya ay tagasunod lamang ni Moses. That is why God know that Joshua would become a good leader because he became a good follower. When Joshua stepped into leading the Israelites, God gave him clear instructions on how to do things that are very applicable today. That is why magandang pag-aralan po natin ito. Especially in the matters of becoming prosperous. Now, alam natin, every new year, yan ang ating ibinabati sa mga tao. Diba? Kasabihin natin, Merry Christmas and a prosperous new year. At gusto natin, 117 live viewers, gusto ko para sa inyo, lahat kayo maging prosperous. Lahat kayo maging masagana. Lahat kayo talagang maging uh, hindi lamang sapat, kundi magkaroon kayo ng more than enough. And that is what God intended for every person dito po sa bayan ng Israel at the time that God was talking to Joshua to take the leadership role that Moses has left off. Sabi niya kay Joshua, Joshua, you have to step up and become a leader that thou mayest prosper and that the children of Israel may prosper. Alam niyo mga minamahal, para tayo po ay talagang magkaroon ng masaganang biyaya ng Panginoon. We must step up. Step up. Huwag ho tayong pakakulelat. Huwag ho tayong maging mediocre. Kailangan po, we must uh, take the lead and get ahead of life. Ibig sabihin, huwag nating hayaan na tayo po ay malugmok dahil sa mga pangyayari sa buhay. Kasi at the time that God was talking to Joshua, Joshua was really discouraged. Nawala yung kanyang leader na minahal niya and whoever suffered loss of a loved one, eh talagang nakakaramdam ng ganyang pagkadismaya. Pero ang sabi ng Diyos sa kanya, be not dismayed. Neither be thou discouraged. So, His promise to Joshua, mga minamahal, is true for us today. Kung paanong sinabi ng Diyos kay Joshua, as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. Ito rin ay sinabi ng Diyos sa atin sa bagong tipan. Kung gagawin natin yung tungkulin natin bilang mga mananampalataya sa kaharian ng Diyos. Ang sabi ng Panginoon, Go ye! and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the ages. So the same promise of His presence was given to Joshua para pangunahan niya ang bayan ng Israel sa pagpasok sa promised land. It's the same promise that God has given us para tating, para gawin natin at pangunahan natin ang gawain ng pagpapalaganap ng salita ng Diyos that the gospel may reach the whole world. Kaya po mga minamahal, nais kong makita nyo dito that Joshua's past experience and position did not matter. All that mattered was God called him to take action and be a leader. You see, no matter how old you are or what your background is, the same is true for us. Age and experience don't have to stop us from doing the will of God now. Ang sinasabi mo eh, Pastor, bata pa ako. O baka sinasabi mo naman, Pastor eh, matanda na ako. Eh, hindi ho pinag-uusapan ang edad sa pagsunod sa kalooban ng Diyos. 
we can learn to craft how we follow now so we can be successful later in following God and in doing His will. After all, God promised good success to those who would follow Him. And by the way, yung sinasabi pong good success sa Joshua 1.8 is not just becoming successful in any chosen field that you like. Baka iisipin mo, ah, i-apply ko nga sa buhay ko itong Joshua 1.8 para maging matagumpay ako sa lahat ng aking ginagawa. But that is not what the promise is all about. The promise is all about having good success in doing God's will. Hindi pinangako ng Diyos na papapagtagumpayin ka ng mabuti, pero ang gagawin mo ay yung sarili mong kagustuhan lamang. Unless you are involved, unless you are really participating and performing your task in doing the will of God, God will not assist you and be with you and enable you to become good success. Kasi kailangan maging instrumental tayo sa kamay ng Diyos. Kailangan ang mga buhay natin ay willing nating ipagamit sa Diyos kung nais nating magtagumpay tayo sa mga larangan na kung saan tayo ay nandoon ngayon. At sa kung saan tayo nandoon ngayon, gagamitin natin ang ating posisyon, gagamitin natin kung ano man ang ating trabaho, gagamitin natin kung saan man na lugar naroon tayo para ang salita ng Diyos ay mapalaganap natin. Oo. Unless we will get ourselves involved in advancing the kingdom of God, we can never have good success. Kamukha kay Joshua, kung hindi po niya pangangatawanan at siya titindig para i-advance ang pag-conquer ng Israel sa promised land, they will not have good success. Kaya po, you obey the Lord now and be rewarded with good success later. Or, you don't obey God at all and you will never experience good success in your life. Kaya isipin nyo mabuti sa umagang ito. Being a good success starts by being a good follower. How can you change the way you follow now in order for you to have good success? What is one step you can take today to start being successful in the places where God has brought you? Kung nasan ka man lugar ngayon, kanina may nakakausap tayo, di ba? May nasa Hong Kong, yung iba sa inyo nasa Japan, yung iba sa inyo nasa Singapore, yung iba sa inyo nasa kung saan saan lugar kayo dinala ng Panginoon. May nasa LA, may nasa uh, Moreno Valley, merong kung saan saan lugar. May hopers, nakakatuwa. Pero sana po, mga minamahal, kung nasaan mang lugar tayo, ginagamit natin yung katayuan natin at yung kalagayan natin upang ang kaharian ng Diyos may advance natin. And if that will be our heart's desire, then God will be with us as He was with Moses and as He was with Joshua. He will be with us and He will help us and enable us so that we might have good success in whatever we do because whatever we do, our main goal is to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ so that others might be rich and might be saved. Kaya sabi ng Diyos kay Joshua, He was informing Joshua to take the lead of leadership to uh, of, uh, conquering the promised land. Pero, ito po ha, gusto kong makita nyo na yung pinangako ng Diyos na tagumpay kay Joshua at sa children of Israel will only take effect if they are willing if they are willing and obedient to His will. Sabi nga po ng isang Christian writer, isang English pastor, 
Brother Paul, I don't know if you know him, he was an English pastor, si Alan Redpath. Sabi niya, full blessing in the Christian life is not bestowed except to eager, hungry people who press in to receive it. So yung buhos at buong pagpapala ng Diyos sa isang Kristiyano, hindi napapasalahat kung hindi para lamang doon sa talagang gustong gusto at tila gutom na gutom para tanggapin nila yung mga pagpapala ng Diyos. Totoo po yan. God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. But the blessings that God has provided for us must be taken and received with eagerness and willingness to obey the Lord. Kasi unless nandoon po yung ating willingness to obey the Lord, Satan has access and he could block those blessings kung tayo po ay madadivert niya o madideviate niya sa pagsunod sa Diyos. Pero ang nais po ng Panginoon ay tibaya natin ang ating pananampalataya sa Kanya so that all, the salt, all assaults of the enemy, all attacks of the enemy, all advancement of the enemy against us. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places will not prosper. Tandaan nyo ang gusto ng Panginoon that thou mayest prosper. And when we speak of God prospering a believer or God prospering like during their time, the children of Israel, it does not mean material prosperity alone. Kasi iba sa atin, pagka narinig yung prosperity, iniisip ka agad, material. But becoming prosperous is receiving the full blessings of God. Not just material. Kung hindi ho- holistic po ito, spiritual, mental, emotional, financial, material, every aspect of our human life will have balance. Hindi lamang ikaw magkakamal lang sa lapi at hindi iyon ang hangarin. Kung hindi unang-una sa lahat, may establish mo ang iyong buhay na ang buhay mo ay magiging kagamit-gamit sa Diyos so that as God bless you, you will become blessing to others. We all face situations in life that we have to take up the challenge that God is giving us. And yet, it is really scary and parang mahirap gawin. Pag naririnig natin yung, are you willing to get involved sa gawain ng Diyos? Are you willing to go all the way, surrendered, and sold out to the things of God? Yung iba sa atin, nagbaback down at take lang muna ha, baka hindi ko kayang gawin lahat yan. We all face this kind of decision where we feel scared and hesitant. Pero anong sabi ng Panginoon kay Joshua? Only be thou strong and very courageous. Many times we can want to turn away from situations that seem scary and challenging and overwhelming. But if we are going to be willing to obey God and take up the challenge from the Lord, we could face any situations, any complications of life, any conditions that we may go through with confidence, believing what this verse says. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. Mga minamahal, kung atin pong hahatiin sa apat, itong mga talata na ito, this is how I will outline it in order for us to remember how to have good success that thou mayest prosper. Unang-una, mga minamahal, it is important that we remember the Creator. Yan po yung makikita natin sa verses 1 and 2. God was reminding Joshua 
that every success that Moses had was not because of his own ability, not because of his own capacity, not because that Moses was a great man, but because he was a man of God. And he has sold out himself and surrendered himself to God as a servant. Kaya nga sabi ng Diyos kay Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. If there's one thing that Joshua need to remember, was that all the exploits, all the adventures, and all those victories that the children of Israel had experienced through their, jo- their wilderness journey up to the brink that they're about to enter the promised land. Nagawa po nila yon, not because of the greatness of Moses, but because of the greatness of the God of Moses. The God who was with Moses. Joshua had to remember that. Who was the God that was with Moses? He is the creator of heaven and earth. He's the almighty God. Kaya mga minamahal, kapag pinag-uusapan natin ito, that thou mayest prosper. How? Because God is with you. Why would you not prosper? Why would you not succeed? Why will you fail in life? When God is with you, who is this God that we are talking about? The creator of heaven and earth. The almighty God. There's no reason why we should be losing the battle, be failing, and be discouraged. Remember the creator. At alam niyo ba sa Bible, pinapaalala na ito sa atin ng Diyos from the time that we reach the puberty age. From the time na nagkakaisip po ang isang tao at nagkakaroon siya ng pangarap sa buhay, sinabi na ng Diyos, Remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth. Sa, kapa- sa isang kabataan pa lamang, sa isang teenager pa lamang, dapat itinatanim na sa isip ng tao. Kung siya'y magtatagumpay, kung siya'y magiging matagumpay sa lahat ng larangan sa buhay, dapat siya ay laging umaalala sa dakilang lumikha sa kanya, ang Diyos na makapangyarihan sa lahat. At ito ang kanyang tatandaan palagi na kasama niya sa lahat ng kanyang gagawin. Minsan, sinasabi natin, di ba, kung kasama ko lang siya, kung kasama lang kita, magkakaya ko ano man pagdaanan ko sa buhay. But let us not put ourselves under the watch care of anybody. Rather, let us put ourselves, our trust, our confidence under the watch care of God. Let us be contented and let it suffice us na sabi ng Panginoon, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So number one, remember the Creator. Number two, that thou mayest prosper, that you may have good success. Ang sabi ng Diyos kay Joshua, read and comprehend. Read and comprehend. Una, remember thy Creator. Pangalawa, read and comprehend. Anong babasahin ko? Anong uunawain ko? Ang sabi ng Diyos kay Joshua, this book of the law. Alam nyo, nakakatuwa. Kahit wala na si Moses, may naiwan si Moses na mga kasulatan. Ito yung tinatawag na the scriptures. The first five book of Moses, the Torah or the Pentateuch. At ito yung pagbubulay-bulaya ni Joshua. Ito yung babasahin ni Joshua. At pagbubulay-bulaya niya, araw at gabi. Siguro, if you were Joshua, sabi mo, wala na akong panahon dyan. Kung ako'y magli-leader, kung ako'y magiging tagapanguna ng children of Israel para pumasok kami ng promise land, eh, wala na akong panahong magbasa at unawain pa yan. Bakit naman ang Diyos, eh, may paggagawa sa aking trabaho, tapos, ang gagawin, kailangan basahin ko pa itong mga to. Wala na akong panahon dyan. 
mga minamahal. Kahit na ano pang kaabalahan mo, at kahit na ano pang larangan ang papasukin mo, kung gusto mo magtagumpay, huwag kang mawalan ng panahon sa salita ng Diyos. Huwag kang mawalan ng pagkakataong unawain ng salita ng Diyos. Sapagkat yan ang mas kailangan ng sino man. Because it's our manual to success. It's our manual to prosperity. The Word of God. This book of the law, sabi ng Panginoon, Thou shall meditate therein day and night. No matter how big the task you will have to face, read and comprehend the Word of God. Basahin mo at unawain mo para malaman mo paano ka magtatagumpay, paano ka magkakaroon ng pagpapala mula sa Diyos. So it is as simple as that. Yung iba kasi, oh, binabasa nga, pero hindi inuunawa. Sabi ng Panginoon, meditate. That word meditate means comprehend. Find out how you can apply it in your life. Kamukha po ng Old Testaments, most of the things written in the Old Testaments were not to us. It was not written to us. But they were written for us. Alright? Yung mga pangako doon, hindi naman sa atin sinabi. Pero pwedeng i-apply natin sa atin. If you know that right interpretation, then you will find out the right application. We just have to study the Bible book by book, verse by verse, according to its context, according to its content. And then you will know how you can apply it in your life. Ang importante po dito, maunawa natin how God works. Ang importante po dito, makita natin how God is able to do wondrous things. Siya nga po palagi ang sabi ng Panginoon. Call unto me and I will answer thee and will show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. We have to remember the Creator. We have to read and comprehend His words. Pangatlo, we have to rely with courage. We have to rely with courage. Sabi po sa verse 6 to 7, Paulit-ulit po sinabi ng Diyos, Only be thou strong and be very courageous. Sasamahan kita. Tutulungan kita. Unawain mo ang aking salita para malaman mo pa paano tayo kikilos ang pagsasamang dalawa. Pero dapat maging matapang ka. Pero dapat maging buo ang loob mo. Ayaw ng Diyos sa double-minded man. Ayaw ng Diyos sa unstable in all His ways. Ayaw ng Diyos sa isang taong urong-sulong, urong-sulong, urong-sulong. Gusto niya kung sulong-sulong. Ayaw ng Diyos sa taong fickle-minded when it comes to doing the will of God. Gusto ng Diyos totally surrender. Gusto ng Diyos totally sold out. Gusto ng Diyos 101% kung pwedeng sobrahan mo pa ng ganun. Hindi po pwede yung, Lord, susunod ako pero 80% lang ha. Lord, susunod ako pero 60% lang ha. Alam nyo, nakakapagtaka. Especially, ngayon ko lang nalaman to during this pandemic. Yung atin palang oxygen, oxygen intake, may level pala yan. May level. Anong level? Percent-percent po yan. Kailangan sa oximeter, ang iyong oxygen intake, hindi bababa sa 95%. Pag bumagsak ka sa 94%, you are entering a critical stage. Oh, makinig kayo mabuti ha. Kailangan lahat tayo, lahat tayo may oximeter na bibili yan online. Hindi yung lagnat, hindi yung ubo, hindi yung sipon. Hindi kung anumang bagay na pakikiramdam mo sa katawan mo para malaman mo kung na-COVID ka. Bagkos ang babantayan mo yung iyong oxygen level. At kapag ka yung oxygen level mo bumaba sa 94, 
bumaba sa 93, bumaba sa 92, bumaba sa 91, bumaba sa 90, wag mo nang hintayin pa na hindi ka na makahinga. Magpadala ka na sa ospital. Yung iba kasi, dadalhin sa ospital, 60 na lang ang oxygen level. Yung iba, 70 na lang ang oxygen level. There was no chance of survival. Eh, pagka bumagsak ka nga sa 94, delikado ka na eh. Kailangan 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. We're talking about life. And isn't it amazing that when it comes to living, God has a very high percentage of keeping your life. Kasi di ba sa exam, sa mga pag-aaral, anong passing grade dati? 75! Oh. <laughs> Pag umamo tayo ng 75%, pasawa, pasado na, pasang awa. Sa mga marka sa eskwela, di ba? Pagkasakar, nakalagay 75, pasado na yan, pasang awa. Oh. Tapos, pagka kumukuha tayo ng exam, pagka out of 100 items, nakakuha ka ng 50 points, so okay na yan, pasado na yan, kalahati na eh. Pero alam nyo, pagdating sa buhay natin, hindi pasado yan. Sabi ng Panginoon, you want to live? Ako, I was assisting. Hindi naman ako naging monitor, hindi naman ako naging teacher sa AC school. Pero, kasi nga, nung nag-aaral ako, familiar ako, ng passing grade ay pag percentage, 75, pag total points, 50, pasado yan. Pero nung nag-assist ako sa AC school, kailangan hindi bababa sa 90. Pag bumaba sa 90, it's not okay. Kailangan 90 pataas. Akala ko mataas na yun eh. Pagdating pala sa Diyos, pagdating sa maintaining our life, you know how God maintain our life? For God to maintain our life, for us to keep alive, to stay alive, there must be 95% up oxygen level. Ganon kataas ang standard ng Diyos when it comes to living. So why am I saying this? I'm saying this, mga minamahal, so that you will rely on God. Kasi, just lang talaga ang may hawak ng ating hininga. Kung hindi sa Diyos, how can we keep up with that kind of oxygen level? especially sa population natin na milyon-milyon na kung sumasagap ng oxygen at yung mga puno naman natin, ilan-ilan na lang nauubos na. Tapos, masyado pang polluted yung ating space, di ba? Saan ka pakukuha ng oxygen? Importante po mga minamahal that we rely on God. God keeps us alive. Lahat ng hininga natin ang galing sa Diyos. At sa Diyos din, siya lamang rin ang babawi niya. We have to rely with courage. Only be thou strong and be very courageous. Huwag kang matakot, sabi ng Panginoon. Ako ang may hawak ng buhay mo eh. Ako ang may akda ng buhay mo. Ako ang dahilan may buhay ka. So you follow my leadership. You obey my will. You do as I say. You rely on me. And you be very courageous. Kasi tayo, pagkadating sa mga ibang bagay, tapang-tapang natin eh. Nagagawa tayo ng mga kalokohan, tapang-tapang natin. Pag magdidesisyon tayo para sa ating sarili, tapang-tapang natin. Pero pag magdidesisyon tayo para sa Diyos, parang hina-hina ng loob natin. Sabi ng Diyos, When it comes to me, you be brave. When it comes to obeying me, you be brave. Be thou strong and be very courageous. Rely with courage. And last, remember thy Creator, read and comprehend, rely with courage and rest. Ready to conquer. Ready to conquer. Nung kami ay Boy Scout, <laughs> meron kaming moto na ang Boy Scout ay laging handa always ready 
Alam nyo, dapat tayo mga Kristiyano, we're always ready. Ready to conquer! Sabi ng Diyos kay Joshua, are you ready to conquer? Because you must be. Sabi niya, as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. Verse 3, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. That promise of presence and power and provision and protection, that promise is for us to conquer, for the children of Israel to conquer. Ang malungkot po mga minamahal hanggang ngayon. Di ba meron labanan ngayon? Yung mga hamas sa Gaza, tinatatamaan ng, sila ng missile hanggang Tel Aviv sa Israel. Yung palang Gaza, dati hawak na ng Israel yan, pero for the sake of peace, ginib up nila. Dahil ang pinili ng mga Palestine ay ang pangunahan sila ng Hamas rather than Israel. So, nag-move out po ang Israel sa Gaza in 2004 at hinayaan ng Hamas ang maghawak niyan. Ngayon, ang mga Hamas na yan, walang ginawa kung hindi magtayo lamang ng mga terrorist sites at uh, i-terrorize ang Israel and all other Palestines, Palestinians doon. Ang problema po from the early civilization ng Israel, from ancient Israel up to this modern Israel, hindi po nila nasakop, hindi po nila na-conquer lahat ng lupain na sana binigay ng Diyos sa kanila. Kaya ang sabi po, pray for the peace of Israel, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Kasi para magkaroon ng kapayapaan sa buong mundo, dapat magkaroon ng kapayapaan sa Jerusalem. Pero para magkaroon ng kapayapaan sa Jerusalem, dapat ang mga Israelites willing to obey God and be ready to conquer. Not for themselves, but for God. Pinakinggan ko yung kanilang ano eh, tungkol sa IDF, yung Israel's Defense Force. The Secret of the Israel Defense Force. Yun ang title ng video. Lagi sila matagumpay kahit anong larangan pasukin nila. Sabi nila, ang sikreto ng Israel's Defense Force wala sa aming mga armas. True enough. I was expecting na sasabihin nila, the secret of Israel's Defense Force is because we rely on God and we are ready to conquer with God. Pero hindi. Ang sinabi doon, is because they rely on the people. It is our people, the soldiers. Well, that is good. But that is not great. Not until Israel will learn to rely not just on their people, but on God, they will not be able to conquer every place which God has promised to them. Alam nyo, ang malungkot is this. Ipinangako ng Diyos sa'yo, iprepare ng Diyos para sa'yo. Just like to the children of Israel, the whole promised land, yung binasa nating territorial boundaries, lahat yon pinangako ng Diyos para sa kanila. But not until this time, wala pa rin sa kanila yon. Hanggang ngayon, pinaglalabanan pa sa Middle East. Kasi ganito, Kahit inihanda na yan ng Diyos para sa'yo, kahit binigay na yan ng Diyos para sa'yo, the enemy will not give it up to you just like that. And God will not hand it, hand it to you like a bacon in a silver platter. No. Kailangan sumunod ka sa Diyos. Kailangan you step up and you have to obey God and be ready to conquer Every place, sabi ng Panginoon kay Joshua, that the sole of thy foot shall tread upon, that have I given thee. Alam nyo kung mga Kristiyano, dapat ang tinin natin yan sa buhay natin. Kung nasaan tayo, nasa Japan ka, nasa Tokyo ka, nasa Singapore ka, nasa Cambodia ka, 
Nasaan ka? Nasa LA ka? Nasaan ka? Kung saan ka dinala ng Diyos, that is your place to conquer for the God of the Gospel. Use the place where you are to become an influence for God, to become a salt and light. Be a conqueror for Christ. And not until we do that, we cannot become more than conquerors. Sabi po sa aklat ni Paul sa Romans, di ba? We are more than conquerors through Christ, through Him that loved us. But that is if we will be willing to obey God. Positionally, yes, we are more than conquerors. But practically, is it? Are you conquering? Or are you being conquered? Baka sa halip na ikaw yung nagko-conquer, marami kang naabot with the gospel, eh ikaw yung nako-conquer ng jablo. Sapagkat napipigilan ka niya, natataranta ka niya, napangihina niya ang kalooban mo, dahil punong-puno ka ng alalahanin sa mga buhay na involved ka, at sa halip na ma-focus mo ang mind mo to be used of God, ay wala kang inaalala kundi ang patsarili mo lang. Tandaan po ninyo ang sabi ng Panginoon, I will take care of you if you put first the kingdom of God in your list. Do as I will. And God said, everything will fall into places. I will take care of you. Every places, sabi ng Diyos kay Joshua, that the soul of thy foot shall tread upon that have I given thee. Hindi ko alam, kapatid, kung hanggang saan at ano at paano ikaw gagamitin ng Diyos. Pero sana, ma-maximize mo at huwag masaya. This is Pastor Jess Marasigan at sana po, you can have the full potential of your life as you follow the Lord and obey His will. Tandaan nyo, that thou mayest prosper. Remember thy Creator. Read and comprehend His word. Rely with courage on the Lord and be ready to conquer. Be ready to go places. Be ready to be what God intended you to become. Sabi nga po, expect great things from God. Attempt great things for God. As life goes on, hope goes on. Pray until something happens.